Hello everyone, welcome to Spec eLearn, the online learning channel dedicated to chemical engineers. Centrifugal pumps controlling pump capacity. In this video course, you will learn what is the need for controlling pump capacity, the methods of capacity control, how to protect the pump in low flow operation. Please subscribe to the channel. By subscribing, you will motivate us to produce knowledgeable video content for you. So subscribe now before you forget. The primary function of the pump is to meet the process demand. Process plant usually run at the rated capacity, but there are situations when the plant capacity is reduced due to varieties of reasons. The pump is required to perform and adjust to this varying flow requirement. Centrifugal pumps running with a given impeller diameter at fixed rotational speed will deliver a capacity at a head where its performance curve and the system curve intersect. How is the capacity controlled in the real world applications? Every system has its own unique head curve, expressed in feet of liquid being pumped and comprised of static head and friction head. Total system static head consists of elevation changes between suction and discharge liquid levels and includes any differences in pressure on the liquid surfaces. System friction head includes head loss in the system caused by the flow of fluid through the piping, valves and fittings as well as entrance and exit losses in the piping. This figure depicts the performance curve of the centrifugal pump of a given diameter running at a fixed speed and the system curve. Friction losses vary approximately with square of the capacity Q for turbulent flow and directly with capacity for laminar flow. Adding the static head and friction head generate the system curve. Operating capacity of the centrifugal pump can be changed by two methods. One, by changing the shape of the system curve. Two, by changing the shape of the pump curve. Centrifugal pump capacity control. Capacity regulation by changing the shape of the system curve. For a given impeller and rotational speed, the shape of the performance curve is fixed. For such a system, the most widely used as well as the most practical solution is to use a throttle valve in the delivery side of the pump. Illustrated in this figure is a centrifugal pump installed as a reflex pump for a distillation column. The reflex flow delivered by the pump is controlled by a flow control valve. The flow meter FT10 measures and automatically controls the reflex flow through a control valve that throttles the flow. Throttling introduces additional pressure drop, that is, system resistance, across the control valve and move the system curve up as illustrated in the figure below. The result is upward movement of the intersection point for system curve on the pump curve. For example, if the control valve is full open, the system curve and pump curve will intersect at point A corresponding to flow Q1. If the valve is slightly closed, the system curve and pump curve intersecting point will shift to B corresponding to flow Q2. As the throttling is continued, a new system curve and capacity Q are produced at each valve position. Thus, as the process flow demand decreases from full capacity, the flow control valve closest to bring about the flow reduction when increasing the system resistance. The pump adjusts itself to the new increased system head, thereby reducing the flow to the process. The throttling method of capacity control has disadvantage. The additional heat produced by the pump 
h2 minus h1 by the direction of flow from q1 to q2 is used for overcoming increased friction across the control well created by throttling. Thus the energy is wasted across the throttled control well making this method the most inefficient from the point of energy consumption. The absorbed pressure loss causes the valve to erode leading to additional maintenance cost. In spite of this disadvantage, most of the user industries use the flow control valve to regulate the capacity of the centrifugal pump because it is simple to use and convenient to operate. Centrifugal pump capacity control by changing the shape of the pump curve by speed variation. Before we move on, I would like to make a call to my dear viewers. Your spec eLearn channel is one stop learning and skill development destination for your career needs. Get instant access to useful career oriented subjects and become knowledgeable and competent. So do not forget to subscribe. Please press the subscribe button now. The change in shape of the pump curve can be achieved by by varying the rotational speed of the pump. Changing the speed of the pump moves the pump curves in accordance with the affinity loss. The effect of variation of impeller rotational speed on the pump curve is illustrated in this figure. Consider the case where the speed of the impeller can be varied by some mechanism in steps from the initial speed n1 to n2 and then to n3 such that n1 is greater than n2 is n2 is greater than n3. The shape of the curve shifts downwards for every step decrease in the speed. For instance, when the speed is n1, the capacity of the heat developed by the pump is q1 and h1. When the speed is reduced to n2, the capacity and heat are reduced to q2 and h2 respectively. When the speed is further reduced to n3, the capacity and heat are reduced to q3 and h3 respectively. Thus by use of suitable speed variation mechanism, the capacity control of the pump can be achieved by varying the speed by the flow control valve in the delivery pipe is kept fully open. The shape of the system curve remains the same. Only the intersecting point of the pump curve on the system curve keeps shifting depending on the impeller speed. The pump in this method wastes no energy. Instead, the power gets reduced as the speed is reduced and vice versa. The capacity varies directly with the speed. Heat varies as square of the speed and BHP as cube of the speed as shown below. This figure depicts the BHP versus capacity at various speeds of the impeller. For instance, consider that the pump is operating at N1 equal to 100% of the speed. For this speed, the pump delivers Q1 equal to 100% at BHP1 equal to 100%. When the speed is reduced to N2 equal to 80%, the flow drops to Q2 equal to 80%, whereas the power consumption drops to BHP2 equal to 51%. When the speed is further reduced to N3 equal to 60%, the flow drops to Q3 equal to 60%, whereas the power consumption drops to BHP3 equal to 21.6%. Thus, there is a dramatic reduction of 79% in power consumption. This makes the capacity control by speed variation the most energy efficient method. The speed of the impeller can be varied by use of variable speed drive VSD. In the case of steam driven pumps, the speed can be varied by changing the speed of the steam turbine, which is achieved by varying the steam flow to the turbine. In refineries and petrochemical plants where excess high pressure utility steam is available, steam turbine driven centrifugal pumps can be used most economically. 
variable frequency drive VFD. Electrical driven pumps have scroll cage induction motors which run essentially at fixed speed. Their speed depends on the number of poles in the motor and electricity supply frequency which is usually 50 Hz. Using variable frequency drive, the centrifugal pumps can be run at any speed. VFDs use inverted technology to vary the supply frequency to the electric motor, which in turn vary the speed and capacity. VFDs can be used to retrofit existing units as well as in new installations. For the retrofit application, one has to evaluate the existing motor. Many times, operating the pump with EFD at lower speed to meet the low flow requirement presents no problem to the motor because there is substantial reduction in power consumption. However, when the system needs to return to full capacity, the drive speed also has to return to its 100% speed. At this situation, the AD current losses will cause overloading of the motor. The motor re-rating may be necessary. If the pump has to run at more than 100% speed, then new large motor will be necessary. For new installations, VFD related losses could be engineered at the design stage and drive can be suitably rated for speeds in excess of 100% of the design speed. VFD systems are reliable and have received a positive response from the end users. They are used widely across several process industries. Centrifugal pumps capacity control, startup bypass valve control. The pump is normally started up with the discharge valve closed. From shutoff condition, the flow is established by opening the discharge valve to fill the piping system up to the flow control valve. Since the FCV is closed, a shock wave generated during this process which transmits the energy back right up to the upstream of the pump. The energy of the shock wave is a function of the head developed, volume of the liquid and specific gravity. As the wave reaches the discharge of the pump, the shaft gets a shock which has the potential to cause damage to it and its bearing as well as the impeller. This condition can be prevented by installing a bypass or recirculation valve which when opened will maintain the flow through the pump at the startup and reduce the damage to the pump. Illustrated in this figure is the startup bypass which is manually operated at the time of starting the pump. The startup bypass flow is recycled to the tank instead of routing to the suction line. The reason being to prevent the buildup of heat during the recycling if routed to the pump suction line. The tank has huge inventory of liquid and will not lead to temperature buildup immediately. Centrifugal pump capacity control and pump protection. Minimum flow control during low flow operation. The above discussed methods, aided by instrumentation and control, make the pumps meet the process requirement at all times. In doing so, how does the system ensure that the pump is protected against damages to its parts, particularly under low flow conditions? Some transient conditions as well as control system disturbances, such as malfunctioning of instruments, will make the flow control valve to close. The pump running in shutoff conditions such as this will cause the temperature of the liquid within the pump to rise. The pump running below the minimum flow condition will have undesirable consequences. Hence, controlling pump capacity is always accompanied by measures to protect the pump against the risk and consequences of low flow situations. The temperature rise can be estimated from the first principle using energy balance. BHP equal to WHP plus heat added to liquid. BHP equal to WHP plus MCP delta T. Where 
BHP is the brake horsepower, WHP is the water horsepower, M is the mass of the fluid pumped, CP is the specific heat of the fluid pumped, delta T is the temperature rising the fluid. Failure to operate the pump above minimum continuous stable flow causes recirculation within the pump, both at pump suction and discharge, which will impact stable operation of the pump, leading to higher vibration levels. With the rise in temperature, the MPSH required will change, resulting in cavitation. Liquids like propylene, ethylene, LPG and several other similar liquids are very sensitive to NPSS problem. When the liquid boils due to heat developed in the pump, the net positive suction cut becomes zero. A minimum flow, if maintained through the pump, will be able to carry the heat and prevent it from heating up. The minimum flow system comprises a bypass line fitted with a closed loop control system consisting of a flow transmitter, indicator and a flow control valve which recirculates minimum flow through the pump based on the set point of the controller. For large plants such as refineries and petrochemical plants, while pump delivery flows are usually very high, an automatic recirculation system as illustrated in this figure is provided. The minimum flow control loop works independently of the main process flow control valve. Thus, even if the main process flow control valve gets closed due to process disturbances, the pump will still run meeting the minimum flow requirement. Suction recirculation and discharge recirculation are the two important low flow related problems the pump will experience when operated below minimum flow requirement. Watch the video on sizing and selection of centrifugal pump part 2 under the playlist pumps to learn and understand these pump problems. Please subscribe to our channel and get updates on the upcoming courses by pressing the subscribe button. It will motivate us to produce free knowledge rich video content for you. With this, we have come to the end of the presentation. Please give your comments if any about this course after you finished viewing this video. Share with your friends and colleagues to reach out to large number of career-oriented professional students. Thank you for watching.